Penalties Podcast, Kyle here with Dimitri and Pierre. They're not allowed to do the intro because multiple reasons. Today, ADHD. we'll chalk it up to that. Today, we will be talking about mainly Robert Kirkman's new book, which has a very surprise ending, which was spoiled to me by multiple comic websites, so they could all burn in hell. But we will be talking about Void Rivals. Brothers. Rivals. Void Rivals. But first... Void Rivals. Let's start with some news and some rumors before we get to the main attraction. News. Punisher will be getting a Disney Plus series. I don't know how that's gonna work it'll work if they do like a full like balls to the wall r-rated show they're not (laughs) pg-13 i'll take it is he gonna use nerf guns he'll curse a little bit like yeah you butterfinger criminal he has to use guns he has to use guns a stealth show the punisher is stealthy and he just like like, bang 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 it's just like he doesn't shoot the gun he hits him in the back of the head and knocks him out yeah, but like really hard. As we were talking about before, Image Comics and this new Void Rifles, this exciting book we will be getting to in just a moment. Hang on, everybody. We will be talking about the main attraction. Image, as a whole, is jumping to lunar distribution. So Diamond not getting those books. So we're we seeing another future of everyone going to separate, smaller printing companies. I don't know. But it's very interesting, and it comes at an interesting time with Image diving into franchises. Again, we'll get to that. Don't worry, everybody. We're going to get to all that. The segment that everyone's excited for. It's my <laughs> segment. That's right. Rumors, baby. And I'm bringing some heat. First off, Deadpool 3 featuring the TVA. What does that mean? means multiple timelines, baby. And mm-hmm. what does multiple timelines bring? Magneto, probably. And what's Magneto bring? X-Men. And what else? A lot of people are going to die, including okay. Wanda. She's already dead. She's going to die again. She Double doesn't have death, a new contract. Baby. Not bringing her back. Let's go. What we- happened to her contract? But she just doesn't have a new one yet. That's crazy. They're not saying it's not going to happen. Just nothing in stone that we know of. I think it was purposely done to fuck with us. So now we mentally think we don't think like about that. Wanda. She's not part of it because, oh, well, she doesn't have any more movies. So mm-hmm. she's alive. I don't think she mm-hmm. died at the end of that. Or... Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think that Wanda is going to be the one that comes back. It's probably going to be that she took over. I like that. Actually, that's a pretty good theory. Spinning out of a rumor. Spinning out of Deadpool 3. Other Wanda from that universe. I'm sticking to that. They should recast her as Namor. I know you wanted to bring up another villain getting canceled for something horrible. I don't know what you're talking about. I just don't understand how you tied it in. But you did it. (laughs) It wasn't good. But thank you. Thank you for Very reminding us. That. It was crazy. I was just watching Narcos, but like I jumped to the third season because I already watched the first two and I'm watching. And I'm like, none of this makes sense. And then I was like, oh, I watch Narcos Mexico. So I have no idea what's going on in Narcos, like regular Narcos. I just mm-hmm. know what's going on in Narcos Mexico. And I'm watching Narcos Mexico and I'm a little lost. So again, I'm not sure if one of these actors that we've kind of like loosely alluded to are in that show. He's in <laughs> Narcos Mexico, the uh, uh, actor. Next, Next rumor, baby. You're I'm just mad that you had a cool Spanish guy. The only no, Spanish guy, honestly. Second rumor, Owen Wilson as Mobius in Venom 3. What do you think? Now, his name seems very, very similar to another character, Morbius. So maybe... Owen Wilson is now the new Morbius. So I think this rumor is even something we can get into more so for the fact that Kang might be backpedaling, which means the TVA maybe will show up in this as well as Deadpool 3, and that might be the way they sprinkle Kang into things without sprinkling Kang into things, or the multiverse. I think we speaking. have a lot going on right now. We got Kang, we got the TVA, we got Spot, we have Ultron. Don't forget, he's floating Mm. around somewhere. And Mm. why I say Ultron, I bring that up from the What If universe, if you remember that episode, him breaking barriers. It's a lot of dimension hopping. I'm kind of getting a little tired of it. Like, I don't know how this became the new subgenre of superhero shit. I'd like an end date. Right? Because the next thing we're going to talk about in our literal next episode is The Flash, which is, again, a different dimension. It feels like a lot right now because we're getting the beginning of it. But I think what the goal is, is really to open up the possibilities for more movies. I think that's all it is. So right now it feels like a lot as we move through it, it'll start separating into other vines of other movies. So you can kind of follow what you want to follow. 
Well, that's why I hope Secret Wars is recent Secret Wars, not original Secret Wars, as in the Marvel superhero Secret Wars. I kind of hope it's the new one where they do the incursion, which was hinted at in Multiverse of Madness. They dropped that word, right? But I'm hoping it's just very close to that comic where we get Doctor Doom and incursions and everything mushes together and it's all one reality again. And they just take the best of, like they always like to do. When I say best of, any actor that's still willing to partake in the MCU, they'll just push it all together and have a nice grounded world once again it's a little overwhelming right now next rumor i'm the one that introduces the next rumors next rumor the rumor title for the venom movie is something relating to toxin yeah if that is true that we're definitely getting toxin i'm fine with getting toxin in the next venom movie i was really hoping for null not that that venom movie is that good for lack of better words that null could be put there maybe be saved for a better version of venom but let's face it this is what we got they're going with it i was kind of hoping we get him but i guess there's a lot of symbiotes they gotta pump through first i think null is the end game and i didn't mean that as a pun but right. i think it's the end game for venom like that's eventually gonna be your character you're gonna see it maybe a snippet of that in the end it's just what if the next venom movie is worse than the last one which was worse than the first one and they don't ever get to know because of it. And then we have to start from scratch with a reboot in five years from now. And they go through the same process and there's all mediocre. We just keep not getting to him. That's, I guess, my concern. I don't see that happening because you have Venom at least set up in two universes at this point. That's so true. So worst case, it flops on Sony's side. They can continue the story on uh, Disney could MVP's do a nice side. rental. A character I'm actually upset that we're not going to see more of. I mean, maybe they didn't die completely. I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, but Carnage. Yeah, I would say they're not dead. I would love to see cult of carnage not necessarily the next movie but hinted at and lead to null just like the comics did we're not getting any carnage at all like uh, Woody Harrelson is so. out. i mean who knows i don't even think they really started too much with it you know and then there's the writer strike so a lot of things are delayed regardless i mean we just got some delays which google it if you care but a whole bunch of movies just got delayed i think deadpool 3 got pushed up which is odd but like that i heard ryan reynolds legally is not allowed to improvise on set because of the writer strike i mean if we're getting deadpool and the x-men like 2000s movie x-men that's what i was saying before like it would be cool if they did something like that also something else with venom where you're able to add more superheroes into it and yeah. it's not just venom yeah no definitely the null stuff you could do like a standalone Venom thing. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of Venom verse style comics where literally just everyone, like the whole street, everyone on it is just turning into a Venom. And I think that's where we got Wolf Venom, my username and a few random apps. Do you think we're going to see Tom Holland Venom? I think he's set to be it with Secret Wars coming up. They have to do it. I don't know. Honestly, I have trouble seeing him doing all of that and them doing all of that well at this point from our last Spider-Man themed episode. I still think Andrew Garfield getting his final movie. Go fuck yourself. Would be. Go fuck yourself. Great. And then like the game, maybe, you know. They're together, Miles and Andrew Garfield, but with Venom on them, and Peter Parker dies, and it's Andrew Garfield, and it's a great mixture. I love it. Why can't Toby die? I think the boomers would riot, because they them. love Toby Maguire Spider-Man. My thing is, if you're not putting Toby Maguire Spider-Man into an Avengers movie, I think Andrew Garfield would be more willing to do more shit than Toby Maguire. That's just my opinion. That's my assumption. Speaking of Toby Maguire and his Spider-Man movies... Sam Raimi on Secret Wars. Yeah, I guess the writer dropped out of Secret Wars. I didn't really like his movie. Hot take. I, yeah, I didn't really like it the style. It was cool, but like kind of weird. Yeah, felt older than it was. Like the scene where she's tripping out and going into herself in the other dimension, like the music and everything. I was like, what's happening? Like, I felt like I was watching a mummy or like Indiana Jones, like to your point. Well, I said the same thing about the first Venom movie, that it felt like it was 10 years old. Like, the style of it was just outdated. And I'm not saying it's a bad style, but if you're not going for the period piece, like, you're just not keeping up with the times. They should get that guy, Latiki, to direct the Secret Wars. Oh, no, please. No. no. Okay. Just no to everything. No more movies for him for a little bit. He gets the break. He's got Star Wars now. Next rumor, please. I got one more rumor. And this one's a double banger. Bradley Cooper turned down gun on Lex Luthor. Why? I think because he's going to go for a bigger role. I don't think Lex Luthor is as big of a role as he could actually land. He could be Batman. He would be a strong Batman. No, I don't know about that, but I think he'd be fine as Bruce Wayne with a, with a Damien. Uh, it's arguably smaller than Lex Luthor. You're right. I think he'd fit it really well. 
Because Green Arrow is yeah. kind of like that annoying, like, I'm as rich as Batman, but I have annoying little prick attitude. Bradley Cooper's also older than we think, so the role would have to be appropriate. That was Green Arrow. Him. Yeah. And you could replace him real quick. Time. Titans are bigger anyways than mm-hmm. the Justice League at this point. Can we argue that? I think we can. Teen Titans Go is one of the highest watched TV shows currently, shit up. which is wild. No, 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 no. I looked this up. <laughs> Teen Titans Go is currently one of the most watched cartoon shows. Should we be watching it? No, I'm just saying that it is currently one of the most watched. In our generation growing up, Teen Titans, the regular one, was one of the most watched cartoon shows. I still think you're lying, but interesting point, Pierre. Thank you. Attached to the James Gunn, I guess, betrayal, the Guardians movie, he is Rocket Raccoon. Supposed to be him, like his life? So he's Rocket, and Marvel Studios is... High Evolutionary. Yes. So James Gunn is Rocket, and Marvel Studios is the High Evolutionary. Now, why is that? Marvel Studios liked what James Gunn did in terms of what he could create. Then he got involved with this shit. They got rid of him, thought they could create it without him. And they started making movies similar to him without James Gunn being around. They realized that it wasn't working out and they still needed him. So they go trying to find him. They bring him in to create what they need, which he did. He did it again. He brought back Marvel. And then he said, fuck you. I don't need you guys. And where did he go? To the new Guardian, DC. So you're saying he kind of didn't like the way Marvel was poking and prying at him. So he made a new team, just like in the end of the movie. Yep. He basically, the theory is that this movie was his final F you to Marvel. Hmm. I mean, he made him a lot of money. So I don't know if I'd call it an F you per se. Maybe like a polite see you later. Working fan theory. All of the times we talk about James Gunn and rumors. I try and clip them just in hopes that he tells us we're wrong to fuck off. Like, I just want that so badly. I want him to correct us. He's not mentioning you because you are right. That's the optimism that's going to keep me going for a few more days. Because I just want to bring up that theory that you still have working, that that white screen and the Badlands song by Bruce mm-hmm. Springsteen means something more than it actually is. It and something. I 100% believe you're right. I wouldn't randomly put that Springsteen song in the credit. You don't get a Springsteen song and not put it in the movie. Not that Springsteen song. It means something. It's you gotta. might be right, too. They might be I'm recasting not... him. I'm right. Okay, so you're right. He comes back as old Star-Lord. That's the next time you see him. You never see him again. Old Star-Lord, recast, doesn't matter because he's old. That's it for my rumor segment. Just want everyone to know that the rumor <laughs> section is over, and we're moving on to the good stuff. That's and soon, right. Panaloids will be as well. All over. The main topic, Void. You put Void Walkers in the notes. This is your fault. <laughs> it's a typo. It was on purpose. Void Rivals. Out of 10, what do we rate this book? Granted that you both read it like you told me you did after I paid for it digitally. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you for paying for it digitally. And allowing us to pirate it off of you, basically. Not advertise it that much. Maybe you don't mention the fact that you paid for it then, and that we read it off of you. I bought three uh, separate copies, is what I did. Wow, that's awesome. (laughs) I am really so thankful that you bought each our own copy. Out of 10, please, your rating? Yep. Intro, 10 out of 10. I am already engulfed in this world, and I can't wait to see more. Wow. You, You didn't finish reading it, did you? No, I did. I'm trying to figure out where the 10's coming from. It's Pierre. Um, the 10 is coming from Pierre. Everything just, is a 10. I got to be honest. I'm making it like a 6. 6? I think it's like a 6. Okay. Womp, womp, like, as womp. far as it's like a first issue goes, like, cool. Where's it going? Okay. So I'm stuck between a 7 and 8. I'm leaning on the 7 for two reasons. The book was a little short. Prove it. What? Spend all your money again on Kirkman. Prove it. 7 out of 10 is not a spend all your money situation. How many bangers has he had since The Walking Dead? I'm sorry, since Outcast. I'm sorry. I mean, Oblivion's song is pretty good. So I'm leaning on 7 out of 10 over 8 out of 10 because it was short. And two, being it was short, the big reveal kind of felt like it needed more. Without that reveal, it needed a lot more. I think with the reveal, it's like, not to say that like, I'm not trying to shit on him. I'm just saying no, that No, I like, loved it. It was good. It just... Like, that's where you go, oh, double issue. Hasn't he done that before, double issue? This felt shorter than a normal issue outside of a double issue. I needed the double issue on this one. So, spoilers for Void Rivals, but apparently Image has acquired not only Transformers, but also G.I. Joe. And they will be producing those titles. The titles that they have announced after the release of this first book, which was a surprise drop, 
No one knew it was going to be connected to Transformers. But the other books will be Transformers number one, Duke number one, and Cobra Commander number one. And they will all be in the same universe. So this is cool to me for the fact that Image is independent and they're actually doing franchise titles and the fact that they did this surprise because we were gonna buy it anyway right i mean it's in my pull list it's kirkman i always give it a try sci-fi always you gave the last one a look too didn't you you don't even know the name of it i think with the reveal to 8 out of 10 without the reveal to 7 out of 10 i think the whole thing the image is getting into making a deal with hasbro is really cool the surprise drop that this is technically a transformers book fantastic i have a lot of questions how did we feel about what was it starstream we saw is that what his name is jetstream jetfire it was jetfire i feel like i made that up on the whim to try and get. i feel like they said it they did i just forgot i mean no you said starstream which i believe was my he first is guess. another guy that is also a plane so I is mean, this one a good guy or a bad guy is he a decepticon i thought he's a good one but he's a spaceship doesn't mean anything. I thought all the planes and shit were Decepticons. No, no, no. They're in space, so go either way. Okay. Just right. like Beast Wars now, which, spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen Beast Wars, which oh, is yeah, all of us, mm-hmm. but I spoiled it for myself, they are also combining Transformers with G.I. Joe. Which is funny that that happens as a surprise after credit scene, and this is a surprise drop that this book is secretly a Transformers book. And then you find out Image has a deal with both, and it's the same universe in the comics as well. Now, is the Transformers book? We got to go right into that point. So yeah, go ahead. I thought they were robots, too. I thought they even say, oh, maybe we can transform just like them. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, they're going to like be smaller robots. I was like, right. They can turn into a scooter. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's see this happen. <laughs> and then they take their helmets off, and they're Adam Warlocks, both of them. I was like, oh, they're the Vision. Because it's funny, one of the dialogues was like, oh, you look like the one in my vision. I'm like, you have a gem in your head. Like, you are vision. What are you talking about? So I guess that threw me off a little bit. But I am interested to see what they do with that and why, like, other than just being a cameo in it, is it going to be bigger than that? Like, is it really, like, I believe it is things together? Yeah, I think because of all these other announcements, we could confirm that because that would have been my question, too. Is it just these void rivals happen to land in this area or this planet? No, I think they're in that universe per se and discovered Energon. What's the name of the fucking Transformers planet? I don't know Transformers shit and people are going to get mad. I'm sorry. It's cool to me. I just never like look into it. Cybertron. Cybertron. I was way off. So my other thought with this book is, are the other books like current time? Are they reboots? Well, they're obviously reboots because it's under image now. Is it just a complete retelling of Transformers? Are we just picking up the characters we know? Is it all in the future or just this book in the future? And this is just kind of like Kirkman playing with the universe in the future, doing whatever he wants because they, they said it was like a million years later, right? So is it just Kirkman building a world and being like, I like these characters. Let me throw them into the future. And the other books are, you know, current time, just normal Transformers books and normal G.I. Joe books. What if their ships are actual Autobots? Oh, like their yeah. ships are Transformers in disguise? That would be interesting. That would be actually. The fact that it's called Void Rivals makes me think they travel through a void and it's another multidimensional thing. But then part of me is also like, is it just Void Rivals with that dimensional thing in mind? And Kirkman's trying to acquire more franchises. And this is just like the first arc. Like the first arc, he messes with Transformers for the first like seven, eight issues. And then the next 10 issues, he messes with G.I. Joes with the same two main characters. And then they go through another void and Skybound makes a deal with someone else, you know, and picks up some other like Power Rangers or some other franchise that somehow is owned by Hasbro. If that were the case, I would hope that Void Rivals isn't the going title. I would hope that the more they acquire, they change it up and go away Mm. from Void Rivals. I don't think it works. It is an odd title choice. I guess, again, it was for the surprise element. I think even if it didn't have the surprise element again, I would keep reading it. Like the sci-fi, whatever of it is interesting. I know I saw some people compare it to Saga. It's like just because it's sci-fi and there's two factions that could have intercourse doesn't make it Saga. But I'm excited for this and I'm not the hugest Transformers or G.I. Joe fan. And I think it's really cool that they found a Transformer on a planet randomly. Does this have Saga potential? Does it have saga potential? Yeah, I would say definitely. I mean, we've seen what Kirkman did with Invincible, and that is as vast and as complicated of a world that he built from scratch. And yeah, he could easily build a world like that, but super heavy on the sci-fi, but with franchises that he can tie in at his will. I mean, yeah, I think it has saga potential for sure. This could be Kirkman's next book, like his next big book. 
I have a question. Okay. Oh. Why didn't you buy Invincible the way you bought Outcast? So I got into Invincible about 70 issues late, in my defense. Outcast, how many issues did that go for? I don't know, because I buried that memory deep. It's probably around 50. Peter's really hating on Kirkman here. It's probably around 50. No, I'm just reminding someone before so the, they go, uh, you the know, The problem nuts. is that Outcast was very exciting to me, because I used to be very big into the Omen movies. And to me, that was like one of my favorite writers writing an Omen style story. And then it flopped. So when I went heavy into it, my thought was, yes. Am I a big fan? Yes. Am I also making good investment points? Yes. And it turned out that the investment part of it was very poor and the story was not as great as I thought it was going to be. I enjoyed it. Did I finish reading it? No, I did not. Got like two of every issue, huh? I think it was more like the fifth print. It went to like fifth printing because that's how big Kirkman's name was at the time. It sure did. Like I wasn't crazy. But yeah, I do think this book has very much potential. I'm rather excited for it. I think it's one of the more refreshing things from a bigger company. I mean, everything that I've been excited about right now, honestly, has been Vault. Like everything Vault's been doing with like, especially like their fantasy shit. That's what's gotten me hyped recently. So this like heavy sci-fi from a writer that I've been a fan of for a long time. Again, with a franchise carrying it. I mean, this is definitely exciting. I feel like I have a nice science fiction fantasy pull list right now with very few superhero books. So, Pierre, just to wrap this up, cover G that you purchased for $225 of Midtown Comics. The one in 100 is sold out on Midtown Comics. Look at that, man. Bought it on eBay. How much did you pay on eBay? I thought you bought it on Midtown. Isn't what you told me Midtown? Did you go there and it was also sold out? Yep, yep, it was sold out. So I went to eBay and I got it for one ninety. Let's go. It's a win. You got it for one ninety? It was a win. Very I interesting. One ninety. Okay. All right. Well anyway, again, Void Rivals, not Void Walkers or anything in between, but Void Rivals by Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo D. Felicia. Amazing art, amazing writer. Very excited. Panelist Podcast. Panelist Podcast. Panelist Podcast. Wilson, baby. Dimitri, That's our second you. topic. What the fuck, Dimitri? What the fuck? I was ready. I fucking had it. I had it.